Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics 1. This lecture is entitled the VHDL Entity Statement, a continue a little in-depth in examination of the VHDL Entity Statement. Previous lecture, we went over kind of the general scheme for a VHDL program. Uh, we're actually going to dive into the Entity Statement. Entity Statement, as we had said earlier, it's kind of the description of the box from the outside. It's got inputs and it's got outs, and it's got a name for the box. The name has an identifier, and if you remember right, some of those rules, it's got to start with a letter. You can use numbers, but it does have to start with a letter. You can use lowercase, uppercase. You can't use keywords or reserve words or operators for it. So how do I describe an entity in VHDL? You can't just draw a picture on it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna write this thing out. It's a text entry. This is the general scheme, how to write an entity. I'm going to go ahead and write it out here. So there's kind of your general scheme. I know I haven't put anything in between there. And what I've got these curious looking blank spaces here, we've got the name of the entity. So what I've got is entity, the name, is. We're going to put something in here, and entity, blah, 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 semicolon. So that thing, the blah, 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 that's the entity name, whatever you want to call it. Entity factory is stuff in the, in the center, end, end entity factory semicolon okay so this is the start this is the end what's in between it's what's known as the port statement the ports that's the ins and that's the outs so the port statement needs a little bit of investigation what the port statement is let's just do a closer examination of the port itself port statement it's got a parenthesis another parenthesis a semicolon what you've got is the identifier of the port name what are you going to call it a, B, or C. What's the mode? Some people call mode uh, direction. And finally, what type of data is it? When I say type, what I mean is it, think about those individuals as software, is it a number, is it a character, is it an operator? What we're going to be using is, is it standard logic? Either one or zero. Is this standard logic? This is my favorite one ever the vector, and we'll go actually into the vector. That's not the complete new stamp for a vector. A vector, if you can imagine, it's a, it's a group of standard logic. So it could be a bit, it could be standard logic, it could be standard logic vector, it could be standard logic, or it's going to be a bit vector, a bunch of different types of types. What flavor is it? And you can do a couple of these. You can have a couple ins, you could have a couple outs. And within this entity, the organization of the ports, oh, let's just do an example. This is the easiest way to do it. We've got the happy cat cat food factory. Its inputs are husks, mats, and seals, and its output is cat food. We're going to go ahead, okay, entity, happy cat, which hopefully is not a keyword or a reserved word. I don't think it is. Happy cat. Entity happy cat is, fast forward, end entity happy cat. It's describing this thing right there. Actually, it's describing this thing right there. What are its ins? The ins are port, husks, mats, comma. So let me redo that again to uh, make sure you got caught that. Husks, comma, seals, comma, mats. I can string them all together on that one line. What I'm saying is that these are all the same direction. They're all ins. Just kind of moved it over, give myself some room. And what I'm going to do is put this colon. What is their direction? They're all ins. There's three types. There's ins, outs, and in out. It's kind of a bi-directional. These things are super useful if you're doing multi-level logic circuits. You can potentially see the intermediary output being fed into another input. So I, you can send it to an LED or something like that. Okay, so these are all ins. And what type are they? I'm going to call them standard underbar logic. Okay, so that is just a portion of it. So I've got to go ahead and kind of close up my ins. I'm going to do that with a semicolon. I could do this all on one line. Or because VHDL, there's a specific word for it. I'm kind of spacing. I think it's called a free format uh, programming language, meaning spaces don't matter. You can make it look however you like. Notice how I, I inset the port statement. It's kind of giving me an idea that it's within the entity. You don't have to do that, but it makes makes it more readable. And I'm going to go into an example of how I can make this even more readable than I have. So what's our output? It's cat food, colon. What mode or direction is it? It's an output. I'm going to call this, what type is it? I'm going to call it standard logic. Okay, output. 
what type of data is it? Standard logic. Since the, that's the last port that I'm going to define, I'm going to close this thing up. So what I've got is ports, port parentheses, what are my ins? Husk, comma, seals, comma, mats, colon. What direction are they? They're all ins. What type are they? They're all standard logic. Semicolon. Go to the next one. And I could, if I wanted to, place that right there. But I'm making it a little bit more readable because now I'm going to find my fourth port, which happens to be an out. It's cat food, the name of it, colon. What is its direction? It's an output port. What type is it? It's standard logic. I'm going to close up the parentheses. Notice I did not put a semicolon there. It's my last port. Close out the parentheses. Now put the semicolon after because I am ending the port statement. Is it readable? Yes, it's readable. Can I make it more readable? Yes. And this is your personal preference. There is a style to doing this. There are cool ways to program and uncool ways of programming. And your preference, to me, I can make this a little bit more readable by doing the following. OK, notice all I did was just give myself a little bit of space. And I know what I'm about to show you takes up more space. But it's, to me, a little bit more readable. The name of one of my inputs, husks, colon. What's its direction? It's an in. What's its type? Standard honor bar logic. Put a semicolon. Now define your other input. Mats, colon. What direction? It's an in. Standard logic. I'm done with that. Colon. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just laying it out in a prettier, easier to read format. You don't have to do this. To me, it just makes it a little bit easier. You can see all your ins and out in a very easily readable format. And I'm just going to go ahead and illustrate something here, too. Does it matter? I haven't defined the other input, but I could put that output right there. It's free format. It's happening simultaneously. It's parallel. Close it up. Is that a recommend practice? No, I don't like it, because I'm going to put my other one. What's my other input? Baby harp seals. Delicious. And now I've defined all my ins, all my outs. It looks super readable. And now since my output was my last one, I don't have to have a comma after it, but I do have to close up the whole port statement with a parentheses semicolon. You don't have to do it this way. To me, it's substantially more readable, but it takes up more space. But all you're doing is control C and control V -ing, all this, okay? cut and paste in it. So let's go try a couple examples here. Okay, so here's example two. What I want you to do is come up with the entity declaration for a half adder. And you might be freaking out, well, I don't know what a half adder is. Don't worry. I don't care about how a half adder works. All I want to know is the entity declaration. What's its ins? What's its out? Properly define it with an entity declaration. So a half adder, what it's in, by the way, if you're curious, what it's doing, it's adding two numbers, A and B, and then it's producing two outputs, a sum and a carry out. And we'll go into a half, hour, a half adder a little bit later. Go ahead. See if you can come up with an entity declaration for a half adder. So go ahead, pause recording. I'm going to go ahead and slowly do this. So I kind of set myself up with a blank space there. Entity, blank, whatever its name is, whatever is in between, end it. Entity, end entity, whatever its name is, semicolon. So what did you call it? I'm going to call mine one slash two adder. Does that work? Nope. This is violating rules of identifiers. You can call it half. Oh, Jesus. Half adder. Entity. Half adder. You can call it Bob. I don't care what you call it. Just come up with something that is identifiable. What's the next step? I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of a inset there so I can read it. I'm going to say port parentheses, parentheses, semicolon. What are my ins? A is an in, colon, it's an in. What type of data is it? For right now, we're just going to stick with standard logic. Cannot wait to show you the vector. Close it up. See if you can do the rest. Should look like this. So hopefully you came up with something like this. I'm going to finally close everything up with a parentheses semicolon. So I've got A colon in standard logic semicolon. B colon in standard logic semicolon. Sum colon. It's an output standard logic semicolon. Carry out colon out standard logic. I don't need that last semicolon, but I do need to close up the whole poor statement. So that's a parentheses semicolon. So it's example three. You can call those different names too. Let's come up with a full adder and it's got to carry in. Okay. We'll see if you can potentially even reuse what you just did here to make a full adder. Okay. You should probably look something like this and there you go. And the, really the only thing I did for this, I changed the name to full adder 
and I added that specific line there. Carry in, which I hadn't, fortunately, it looks like it's got a space in there. I meant to run those together. Carry in, semicolon, in, that's the direction, standard logic, semicolon. Entity, sta entity statement is pretty easy. You should be able to do these things. I should be able to give you a box with ins and outs. You should be able to declare the entity statement pretty easily. Okay, let's go actually go on to the architecture statement. And what is the entity statement versus the architecture statement? The entity statement is name of the box, the inputs and outputs of the box. The architecture statement is what do you do with those inputs to come up with the outputs? We're going to do some very basic architecture statements in the next lecture.